it falls to me, of course, to say welcome. Uh, welcome to all of you, because actually this is the first ever in-person ICE Connect event that is focused on women in fellowship. So welcome to some of our newest fellows, mainly women, but some men as well, fantastic. Welcome to those of you who will soon be fellows, even if you don't realise it yet. <laughs> uh, but also welcome to everybody who is already um, a fellow of the ICE. And obviously it goes without saying, this is a fantastic room because it is so full of women this evening, but it goes without saying that we have intentionally made this event open to everybody, men and women, although the focus of this event is on women in fellowship. Just as a tiny bit of background in terms of how we've got to this point, um, Hannah Smith, who sadly isn't here this evening because she's up in Scotland, um, and Jenny Green, who is here this evening, um, supported by Sean Harris and all of the other regional directors here at the ICE. Um, essentially, they cooked up a bit of a plan through the pandemic to address what is actually a really glaring need, and a glaring need to really focus in on some of the subgroups of ICE membership, where at the moment we have, shall we say, not enough people in terms of the overall balance. And we are really, really lucky, actually, that Hannah and Jenny, when they first had some of these ideas, decided to start with women in fellowship. So that is why we are all here this evening. We probably all know that women are the most severely underrepresented group at the most senior grades of membership of the ICE. The ICE is not alone in that. A lot of the professional engineering institutions have exactly the same problem. Given the backdrop of the past and where we've come from as a set of sectors and industries and so on, it's maybe not hugely surprising, but that doesn't make it okay to ignore the issue. How many fellows in total of the ICE do we think there might be? I know. 5,000 odd. Now, this is the real shocker. And I am going to steal Michelle's thunder a little bit, I think, in this one. But I know some of you already know the answer. Of those 5,000 people who are fellows today in the ICE, what percentage or what number of women do we think there are? It's 6% of the total number of fellows. Not 6% of the membership, 6% of the people who are already fellows. So that is... 294, I was about to say three, 293 women who are fellows. So that makes us most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, maybe, but it's, it's slightly depressing, isn't it, when you actually look around the room and you realise that, quite seriously, there really are not very many women in fellowship of the ICE right now. So on the one hand, we're part of an exclusive club. That is fantastic, but we'd like it not to be quite so exclusive, I would suggest, going forward. So the whole point is we are here this evening to start to do something about it. We've had various events already. There was a fantastic event back in um, October. Again, the feedback was staggering. And so here we are this evening. So I'm hoping I've not stolen all of Michelle's <laughs> speaking points. I don't think so. I don't think so. But it is my absolute pleasure to, inv to invite Michelle to come and speak to us all this evening. Um, so she's going to share some personal insights and also give her take, I guess, in terms of what some, some of those figures I've just been talking about there and what it means and what we might actually do about it. So enough from me. Thank you very much. Lovely to see you all. And I um, look forward to talking to you all very shortly over, over the course of the evening. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's great to be here. It was an honour to be at the launch of this um, ICE Connects for Women in the autumn and to hear what was said. And it's even more exciting that things have developed further. It's important because we want better representation at a senior level within the institution, within our profession, to be able to like, showcase the good women within um, the profession. Becoming a fellow is an acknowledgement that you've done really, really well. So getting more women into fellowship is to be able to acknowledge other people. Here's a whole load of role models. You want more women into the organisation, into the profession, and therefore it, it's important that we get together and do that. And it wasn't really until my 50s that I actually sort of like became aware of the fact that perhaps I ought to go and network. But it was quite a daunting experience. So sort of like, particularly when most of the people you were networking with were men, and you sort of like walked into a room and people sort of like, sort of like stood in a circle. You thought, how do I get off the wall and stop being a wallflower and try and join these people? But one of the things that's really helpful, and I'm really glad I can say you've got them here, are poser tables. <laughs> they are brilliant because if you've got people gathered around them, I learned you've got an excuse to dive in the middle <laughs> to grab a crisp. So it's good that <laughs> food there. And if you dive in and then look around in the hope that someone might say, oh, hello, 
then you could talk to them, and if not, just stand there and eat the crisps. <laughs> so, tactic learnt. But the other thing that I learnt was everybody is worth talking to. I quite, quite frankly am a bit put off if someone has a list of attendees and they've marked it, and then they sort of go <laughs> to like find those people. You know, everybody in that room is likely to be valuable to you. Everyone's likely to help you in some way. Maybe not now, but in two years' time when they're managing director of a huge company and you want to have that sort of contact. So everyone is worth talking to. So actually, what I, what I hope is that this fellowship gives you the opportunity to make friends with other senior women who are having those same experiences that you'll enjoy the company of because you've got some common interests and you'll be able to like, do some of those sort of sharings of, of experiences that you've had. So I hope that it can provide a friendship but I think there's a you know, the requirement of us to help other women to provide a role model, to provide a well-trodden path or a, or a friend to walk along a path with as sort of like fellows within the organisation. And I hope that sort of um, one of the simplest things that we can do, as I said at the beginning, is to help people become fellows and help them with their fellowship. In summary, I think it's great that we've started this journey. Um, I wish such a network existed 20 years ago or even 40 years ago, or 45 years ago when I first started out. Um, but it's great to see that it's started. It's great to see that it's moving forward. And I hope that all the things that sort of I know the ICE wanted to see is that we got a voice to actually take these issues forward. We could build a community, uh, which through networking I hope that we can do, and that we can provide support for each other, but also for other women that we want to bring into the fold. So. Sorry for going on longer than I expected, um, but you did get fed and you did have a drink beforehand. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Thank you.